Okay, this is biology test one review just on characteristics of living things and viruses. This is in addition to the questions that we've already gone over, the virus questions and the ones from your quiz on characteristics of life. So these are just some extra questions to get you thinking. Okay, question one. Um, ignore the little three there. Which of the following is not a stimulus that living things sense and respond to? DNA, light, hunger, or sound? What I suggest you do is pause and either write this down or write down your answer and why you think so before you move on to the next slide where I explain the answer. Okay, and make sure you notice that it says not. And I've included those because they're very frequent on MCAS, so it's, use, it's worth getting used to. Okay, the answer is DNA. So living things respond to significant things in their environment. And so examples we've talked about are how plants bend towards light. We've talked about how our mouth waters when we see food we're about to eat. We've talked about homeostasis, how the body maintains balance. For example, when you're cold, you shiver. That's part of how living things respond to their environment, and it's how we maintain homeostasis, it's how we grow, it's how we metabolize. Question two, what is true of all organisms? Organisms grow and develop, organisms grow but never develop, organisms always remain the same size, organisms always shrink and divide. So pause and come up with your answer. Okay, the answer is all living things grow and develop. So that's one of the things in the Mrs. Nurg and one of the things we've talked about a lot is that living things need to grow and develop. So we go from being one cell to many, many, many cells and individual cells like prokaryotes, bacteria that we're going to talk about in a couple days also grow. Um, so they'll go through a growth phase before they divide. Question three. What is the smallest functional and structural unit of life? The membrane, the cell, the stimulus, the metabolism. Okay, so you have some typos here, sorry about that. And the answer is the cell. Okay, so all living things are made of at least one cell. And the cell carries out metabolism, respiration, and growth. So the cell is like a little organism onto itself. And of course, there are unicellular organisms, one-celled organisms. And one of the examples we saw was a single-celled fungus, the yeast that we looked at. Um, we also saw um, single-celled protists that carried out metabolism, respiration, growth. And by metabolism, we mean eating and digesting, um, or for plants, um, they also you know, eat the sugars that they make, but they also make sugars using the sun. Question four. Which of the following characteristics is shared by all organisms? All organisms are composed of two cells. All organisms can move. All organisms can smell and taste. All organisms can do photosynthesis. So you can pause here and think about your answer. And the answer is all organisms can move. And if you don't remember all the things that Mrs. Nurg stood for as a little way to remember, it was Mrs. Nurg plus all living things are made of cells, and the M is for movement. So you might want to refer to your notes. Question five. Which of the following is the structure of a virus? Genetic material surrounded by a capsid, a nucleus surrounded by a membrane, organelles in a cytoplasm, mitochondria surrounded by a protein envelope. So which one of those is the structure of a virus? You can pause here. And the answer is genetic material, either DNA or RNA, surrounded by a capsid. And I know you can't see the details of the picture here, but here we have um, uh, DNA surrounded by a capsid, and then it also can be surrounded by a protein envelope. So you might want to see your virus handout or the virus PowerPoint for the structure because there are several questions about structure on the test. 
Okay, and lastly, a sample open response. Describe a virus that infects humans. What are some of the symptoms? How does it pass from organism to organism? What is the structure? I think I've, another sample open response I could have put here would be, um, how could you prove that a virus is non-living and ask you to describe two of the features that make a virus non-living? Um, but this one, of course, would refer exactly to whatever virus you researched. And I'd be looking for some of the things that you had to know about your virus. So the answer, of course, is to review the virus that you researched. And if there was something missing, review it now. Um, so some of you were missing uh, a picture of your virus, so you couldn't comment on structure. Some of you were missing how it moved from person to person or from mosquito to person, so you might want to review that. Or you might want to pick a simple virus like influenza, the flu that we talked about a lot, which you already know pretty much how it passes from person to person. Okay, so my other advice is to study the questions that were in the sample virus questions that I gave you for homework and the characteristics of life quiz as well as the characteristics of life quiz that's posted on Schoology. Um, I will reuse those questions but I might reorder them. Um, I may reword them a little bit. So I would make sure you understand the content of what I'm driving at. And when you review viruses, remember that you're thinking about what makes viruses living or non-living. Now biologists are considering them non-living, but why might you argue them living? So they're not made of cells, they do have DNA or RNA, they don't have any organelles. So think of those key features of viruses as you review. And if you have any questions, you can certainly email me or you can contact me through Schoology. And that's the end. I hope you have a um, quality study time.